Today's toy spot is on the NECA Predator figures. Today we're having a look at Jungle Predator. As indicated down below, even on the packaging, this Predator has new additional articulation, removable backpack, and extendable wrist blades. One of those three options, one of those three features, is a new feature, and that would be the new art additional articulation. It also looks like they've spelled articulation or additional wrong. I thought there was an extra D in there, but um, this utilizes the same Predator that we've gotten as an unmasked version that came with the Xenomorph in a Toys R Us exclusive two pack. And of course, we've also got a masked version of this same figure in the past. We will get into the additional articulation when we get this out of the package. Down below, we have a picture of the Predator. On the side, it's also indicating 25 years of Predator. 25 years. It's hard to believe. That's when, that's when you feel old, is when you look at stuff like that and you think, wow. Wow. On the back, other figures that you can get, there's the Jungle Extraction and Jungle Patrol Dutch. And of course the Predator in the middle there. Deep in the Central American jungle, the Predator is hunting humans for sport. Armed with its plasma caster, wrist blades, and a cloaking technology, the Predator meth methodically stalks and kills the opponents he deems worthy. Jungle Hunter Predator collects the skulls and spines of his victims as trophies and skins his prey, leaving the bodies hanging from the trees. When a special force team is dispatched on a rescue mission, they soon become the Predator's prey. What I am going to do is take a break. I'm going to get this opened up. When we come back, a better look at the Jungle Hunter Predator. Stay tuned. The one piece that you'll get separately when you take the figure out of packaging is this top shoulder mounted cannon. Um, there is a little peg right there, a little uh, clip as well as a clip down below here. Um, even though you've probably seen this countless times already, there is a little groove. You see that right above his shoulder and there's actually a little clip down here. I find the easiest is to take the clip and clip it from the bottom and then just stretch it across until it clips into place up top. And there you have his shoulder mounted cannon up at the top there. Um, this isn't, of course, the first time we've gotten this figure. The spot is already reiterated. Um, we have actually also, I think we got this figure in the NECA Predators line. There was a battle damage version as well as a, a regular mass version. I've done reviews on both of those. Uh, but the first time, first time we've actually gotten the same figure with the additional articulation in the legs. And the one thing that was plaguing this figure, I think, before, and really has plagued Predator figures as a whole, has always been the notion that these have always been limited articulation. Usually you've gotten yourself a V-cut, a V-cut around the thigh area, which has only allowed the Predator's legs to move back and forward on that V. It also has mean that because it's a V cut, the legs will always jet out in a V fashion, um, which always and ends up meaning that you're not going to get a lot of uh, really interesting leg stands in the in the figure when you're posing it. Um, that's the one thing that NECA has now decided to go back and fix, and I'm really liking that a lot. The downside, though, is with this new articulation that they have present on their newer figures, it's always then as a collector that we go back and we start looking through our library of collections, going across our shelves, and we look at the other things that they've released in the past, and we think to ourselves, hmm, boy, I really wish they could go back and do said property with this new articulation. I'm always still thinking, okay, I really hope they can go back and redo, not redo, but maybe future releases of the Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy's, we can get articulation in the legs. Now, granted, that would mean that, of course, all the other Freddy's that we've gotten in the past, they'll likely probably just going to continue on and just change out the upper torsos. Different, obviously, different conversation, but you get the idea. I really like the fact that they've included that. Unfortunately, I don't have my other two, I guess my other three versions of this figure. I don't have them readily available. I think I've got them packaged away somewhere, but it is utilizing the exact same figure. 
Um, where though, where they are changing it out though, as I draw very close attention to the groin of the predator, this whole sash area, this extra, this extra, I don't know if you really want to call it like a loincloth, but this section right here would have actually been sculpted to the legs of the, the original released predators. And then you would have had your V cut part of that sculpt. Because they are utilizing this articulate, uh, ridiculous I was going to say this additional articulation here they can now afford to put an extra piece uh, over top it just gives it a little more realistic look to it than just simply a sculpted piece to the lower torso and then the legs are part of it but all the other key aspects of the predator are still present you've got yourself the little necklace of, of spinal pieces and bones and, and smaller animal bones and whatnot it makes you wonder though, if he is hunting things for sport, what would possibly be a sport for him to be hunting things so small as, as the skulls that these would represent? Perhaps the mouse looked at him the wrong way. Oh, bat flew in, in front of him. Bit of a threat, let's annihilate it and use its bones. Um, despite the fact that it is utilizing new additional articulation, unfortunately the one thing that this predator does, does not have uh, is actually the swing out control panel. Uh, that's the one thing that they just have not included in this figure. And really just an, an additional piece, nothing really would have been required other than just a hinged part on top of it. But uh, if you're gonna take the time and market it as, a, as an additionally articulated figure, almost implying that we've now got all, on, all out and given it the bells and whistles, they could have easily given it some bells and whistles here. Uh, on a sculpt level, the face is the same as it was, Got a little bit of a scratch or some sort of imperfection in the mask, which I don't think is actually supposed to be there. And there's also a little bit of paint going on there as well. For the most part, it's done pretty clean. I mean, it's, I guess around here, it's to your discretion as to whether that is just a mess or they've just placed that accordingly to the way it's supposed to be. Uh, he's got, his, of course, his dreads, his predator dreads in the back there. They seem a little darker than the other version of the predator as well, but it might be just me looking for it. Something also, too, and maybe eventually we'll get this when they can figure out just how about, or how are we going to go about doing it. I'd love to see, at some point, a removable mask. Kenner, long, long time ago when they had first the license to the Predator line of figures, they had removable masks. Of course, unfortunately, it meant the mask underneath was just an eyesore. Uh, McFarlane also tried it, and uh, again, you end up just getting with a squished face. So between having a helmet that looks just too bulky or a, ma or a face underneath that looks just too squished, I'm hoping one day um, NECA will give us an unmasked uh, helmet version of Predator that you can just take the mask off. Uh, other points, he does still have the removable blades. They don't extend out very far, but as long as they need to be, I suppose. I don't remember these being the case, but these fingernails and fingers as a whole are not only extremely fragile feeling, but also very pointy. We have to keep smokestacks and Optimus Prime short for the children's eyes, yet stuff like this is acceptable. I, but you know, no means, and no means in, in my nitpicking the fact that these hands are sculpted well. It's just funny that, you know, smokestacks are an issue, yet something like this, which, you know, you can hurt yourself. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of a sharpness going on there that uh, that, that is still passable. In the way of finally getting to his articulation, this is the Predator's, I think, the one key point that makes this figure well worth picking up. Uh, his head is on a ball joint, which will allow the head move up and down, left and right, and swivel left and back and forth uh, on that pivot point. If you really technically count the shoulder-mounted cannon, it can move up and down, rotate up and down as well. Uh, his arms are on a pin and socket shoulder, so they will rotate out. They will allow the figure to bend out in the arm and also rotate back and forth. He does have a hinged elbow, which is always one thing I'm so careful with because my last uh, couple of Predator figures, 
Um, one of them, I think, did break right in that elbow point there. There's a bend at the elbow, arm rotates back and forth. He does have a ball jointed hand, which will allow the hand to move, pivot, and also rotate. The waist should rotate. There goes the pack there. The waist does rotate. We'll get back to that. And then as for the legs, the legs go forward, back, out. A rotation in the knee, which I think is in there. Oh, sorry, excuse me. He has a double bend in the knee. And then he has a pivot and bend in the foot. There's the underside of his foot there. And we'll just zoom back here. Get the clip of his, get the shoulder mounted cannon back on his shoulder there. Yeah, it's one of those figures where unfortunately, you may likely have already picked up this figure in its initial run. It's not to say that this figure is not worth picking up now. It's just a simple case that you might end up having more than one predator to get ideally the perfect predator. And we may see ourselves doing this yet again, where like the, like the Robocop figure, they find a way to improve it. They improve the Robocop with the swing open holster uh, leg to hold his, uh, his auto nine. With the Predator now, we've got the additional articulation. I think that's great. I almost feel as if, though, this is just the beginning and that maybe we'll get another Predator at some point with the open control panel and possibly even a removable mask. Also, if you are wondering, on a scale level, there is Dutch. And I think they are actually scaled accurately. Kevin Peter Hall was quite tall, and I didn't mean to rhyme when I say that, um, obviously he had to be because he was Harry from Harry and the Hendersons too. Did you know that? Hmm, maybe not. Um, but I think he's scaled accordingly to Arnie here. He is definitely a must have if you ask me. Unfortunately, it means that if you already had Predator, a classic masked Predator, you're likely going to be picking him up again. That suits me fine. That may not accommodate everybody who maybe already has this figure. If you didn't, well, by all means, this is the best version of this figure to pick up. I'm going to give this Predator, Jungle Predator, a 9. Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the NECA Predators figures. And we're looking today at the new, additionally articulated, Jungle Predator. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.